Okay, I'm John Garrison. I'm the Minister of the Environment for the province of Ontario in Canada. And I guess we're hoping to hear a little bit more. You were talking a little earlier about some of the, the work that you guys are doing in Ontario, and you were talking about phasing out coal. And I was hoping to hear a little bit more about that plan and, and what you guys have been up to. Yeah, about one third of our uh, energy is produced through coal in, uh, in Ontario, with about another half being produced by nuclear and about a sixth by uh, hydroelectric power, basically at Niagara Falls. And we made a decision, and we ran on a platform in 2003. Uh, during the election campaign that we were going to phase out coal-fired energy uh, plans by the year 2007. Once we were in government, we realized that it was simply too ambitious and simply couldn't be done. So we have now legislated into law the fact that by 2014, we will be out of coal-fired energy production. Uh, it will basically be replaced by conservation. I think there are many, many conservation methods that will still be taken. Uh, also by improved building codes, by including planning legislation, uh, by uh, much higher uh, intensity of development uh, rather than the ever-expanding uh, sprawl that we have basically legislated against as well, in, particularly in the Toronto area, uh, where we've created the 1.8 million acre uh, green belt around Toronto, good uh, farmland and environmentally sensitive land. And so uh, we've also heavily, got very heavily over the last two or three years into uh, the whole uh, production of renewable energy. Uh, our wind energy production has uh, probably increased by about 50 fold since we first started from only having a few turbines in Province Ontario. And currently we have about 19 projects that average anywhere between 50 to 100 turbines. But that's only the only beginning. Uh, we've also established a number of solar energy farms and we are uh, 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 developing uh, biomass and biogas uh, energy uh, sources as well. Uh, the one way in which we can meet our goal in another six years is that we are currently developing uh, in combination with the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of the Environment uh, a Green Energy Act which will allow individuals to basically sell power into the grid. As a matter of fact, we already started that program a couple of years ago, so that uh, uh, companies or even individuals who put up a wind farm or who uh, introduce solar energy into their through panels uh, in, into their system, they in effect can sell that to the system by a guaranteed contract that runs for a minimum of 20 years so that some of the investments that they have put into those systems will in fact be, uh, will in fact be, uh, be paid back over that period of time. Uh, but we have to do much more. If we truly want to meet our goal of meeting our 2014 deadline, uh, we basically have to get many more renewable energy projects going. We are very fortunate in that uh, seven out of the eight Great Lakes border Ontario and uh, wind energy is something that is very plentiful, particularly at the western end, or I'm sorry, at the eastern ends of all of the Great Lakes. Uh, so uh, a lot of the energy farms, uh, wind energy uh, turbine farms, are being located on some of the eastern shores of the Great Lakes, both on Lake Ontario uh, and Lake Huron, uh, as well as Lake uh, uh, Lake Erie and, 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 and the Lake Superior. Uh, we're absolutely convinced that by getting out of coal-fired energy power generation, that is the way to go in the long run. And you actually campaigned on that issue. You said, yeah. And how is it? I mean, how is it? Well, you said that in, in American politics today, here people would freak out. I mean, how is it? How did it go over publicly? There? It, it went over publicly quite well because I should be totally honest and fair with you that we do not have any uh, coal production in Ontario at all. So all of the coal that we have in Ontario was basically imported a lot of it from the United States, uh, from places like uh, West Virginia and you know, other places in the Ohio Valley area, Kentucky, uh, so that it, it, it in, and by itself did not uh, mean a, a significant uh, job loss. Uh, but one of the things that our government is absolutely convinced in is the notion that, you know, it's no longer a choice between the environment and uh, the economy. Uh, our Premier has set 
some very ambitious goals uh, in, first of all, setting up a, 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 a green energy a green economy committee, which is this top committee of cabinet that brings together both the economic development uh, departments as well as the environment department. We feel that the only way that we're ever going to compete internationally with the billion or so Chinese, with the over billion people in India, and we're only have about 14 million in Ontario, is by having the highest educated workforce and by bringing on the greenest technology so that we can actually uh, compete internationally in the exporting of our green technology. Currently, um, the green technology in, in Ontario is an $8 billion a year uh, business already, of which about a billion dollars are being exported, and that means about 60,000 jobs uh, in our province. So uh, all of these efforts are, are, are primarily intended to, to become leaders in the whole green technology uh, uh, area. Uh, we've also uh, set up a climate change secretariat, which we feel is extremely important because a lot of the climate change issues are not the purview of one particular ministry or one particular department. It crosses all government uh, areas. And we've also done some work with an expert panel on climate change adaptation. Uh, and they've given us some excellent advice as to how we should adapt uh, the various ways in which we do things in order to uh, to deal with some of the uh, climatic events that are likely to happen over the next 20 or 30 years. Um, I should also tell you that we have joined the Western Climate Initiative and are working very closely with California and the Western states and other provinces as well that are part of that, such as Quebec, Manitoba and British Columbia. And currently we are developing a cap, cap, a cap and trade system with the province of Quebec, and between Ontario and Quebec, you have about 75% of all the manufacturing industry in Canada, and so that we will have a system in place uh, so that we can meet the targets that have been established by the Western Climate Initiative when that system uh, gets up and running in, in 2012. Uh, I suppose the most significant thing that has happened from our perspective as well, uh, being uh, your cousins north of the border, as it were, uh, is that we are very, uh, we feel very positive about these statements that uh, President-elect Obama has made. It has already uh, shown a different attitude by our own federal government. Uh, I think that uh, they realize they've not been very supportive with respect to uh, the cap-and-trade system of, uh, uh, of uh, on, you know, development as far as greenhouse gas emission reductions are concerned. But they realize that if a system like that is going to be adopted here in the United States, and it's obvious that Canada would have to be part of that as well. We are about a tenth of the American economy and about a tenth of uh, the American uh, the population that we have in, in, in the United States. So I think it's a very positive move uh, all around, uh, all the way around. And uh, as I indicated, uh, certainly the, the closure of our coal-fired energy uh, plants uh, is, is an integral part of our, uh, of our overall uh, greenhouse gas emission goals.